Okay, I believe this will be a fun little notebook. I've been searching for the best spectrogram representation for several audio files, and I have a bunch of audio snippets, and they're all exactly four seconds or less in length, and I have two overarching goals here. Um, the first is to find out to find the smallest resolution spectrogram without losing patterns in the image. This is because I want to train my model more quickly by using smaller data, and also because I believe the model can more easily find patterns in coarser data sets. And the second goal that I have, which is something I have yet to solve uh, until today, is what to do about um, audio files of varying length. Um, I need to produce spectrograms uh, having that have exactly the same shape, meaning that both the x-axis and the y-axis data needs to be uniform. And here's our first spectrogram, the siren. I really love this one because you can easily see how the pitch is rising and falling throughout the sound, through here, etc., etc. Down below, I put a bold reminder that my STFT results have the frequency along the x-axis, the time slices, along the y-axis. And I got these mentally turned around in my previous videos, so I don't want to make that same mistake here. So in this little for loop, I take the, uh, the siren histogram and I decimate it along the y-axis, which is the frequency bands. I'm removing every second slice, and then I re-render and then try again for every fourth slice, render, and I repeat this 20 times. Go ahead and do that. Now you might want to notice that I'm not changing the length of the sound. The time is still four seconds in length. I'm basically removing uh, frequency bands along the y-axis. So, and you can see that as I downsample every fourth slice, every sixth slice, that the uh, resolution goes down and down. However, we still seem to be maintaining the essential patterns. For example, this line here you see coming up, it still exists even after uh, only taking every 12th slice from the original. And it still is present, but not so much. But well, indeed, it is still present even along the 20th slice. I might be able to downsample to this degree and still have good uh, training data. Okay, so that takes care of the first goal that I had. The second goal uh, is how to deal with the audio snippets that are shorter than four seconds in length. Now let's check out the sound of a car horn. This is just, so for this car horn, the audio is much shorter in length than the four seconds that I'm finding out on average is the length of the other audio samples. In fact, this is less than a half a second. It's only 0.2 seconds in length. And this is the shape that's produced. It's 1025 by nine. And you can actually see that visually. We have nine columns here. So there's like nine little sections where the frequency band was, was uh, analysis was done on the sound. Actually, why don't we go ahead and just play this little sound for you. You can see it's just a little short guy. Beep. I'll either have to find the length of the shortest sound in my entire uh, directory of sounds and reduce the length of all of my other sounds to make them uniform. In other words, uh, I find the shortest sound is maybe this 0.2 seconds. And so that's like, well, to do an apples to apples comparison uh, and to get the same shape of data, I'm only going to be able to process 0.2 of all of the remaining samples. But I don't want to do that, right? Because I'd have to, to throw away quite a considerable amount of good information. So I think I'm going to come up with a different strategy. I printed out some info about the horn, and you can see that the sound is only uh, 4,574 uh, samples in length and at a sampling rate of uh, 22,050. So my thought was to increase the size to match, I'll just take my STFT horn data and resample it. This will increase the length of the array to match the size of my four second samples, and you know the resampling function will fill in the gaps. So here we go, we're going to resample to match the size that I expect. And this is my result. Okay, great. So we can see here that the power distribution looks essentially like our little snippet. However, it's just a whole lot smoother throughout the four seconds, which is maybe good or maybe not. I said here, this looks nice, but will the smooth transition between time slices help or hurt when training on this data? And I made a note to myself to also consider uh, repeating like just taking like the sound that you might hear in one second sample or in one second audio file and just kind of like put it in a loop, da -da -da -da, repeat it up to the four seconds. And then time stretching, which is something that if you've ever done any work in an audio, uh, digital audio workstation, 
uh, and you want to have a sound, but you want it to last a little bit longer, then you, you can apply a time stretching function to it. it just, just takes the same sound, but stretches it over time. And there are some artifacts that are introduced whenever that happens. So if you stretch something out very long, it'll retain the same pitch, but you'll hear some artifacts in the sound. So I say here, now that I have the correct time slice length, um, let's go ahead and decimate again to kind of downsample it. Again, by not taking out slices of time, but by taking out certain frequency bands throughout. So now that I have the proper shape, I want to again downsample along the y-axis as I did up top. And I made a note to myself that I might want to try out one or two other strategies for filling in the gaps, repeating and time stretching. Before I look at my horn file, let me take two other samples and demonstrate them. Sound number, let's see, training files array element 12. So it's the, the sound is only at 7632 in length, and I'm going to basically use the time stretch to bring it up to 88200. This is what it sounds like before. It's another little horn. And once it's been uh, time stretched, it sounds like this. So as you can tell, there are some weird little artifacts in the noise that were added by the time stretching, though it still sounds essentially like a horn being blown in a parking lot somewhere. Let's run that again, get these guys loaded up again. This, song, this one sounds like so. I don't know if that is some kind of power tool, so maybe a lawn tool. Well, the stretched version sounds like this. I really think this is going to work. So I think that this is going to be the approach that I take. Um, let's go back to the actual horn, the one that we were looking at up above. Here we go, horn file. Dun, dun, dun. It's our original horn. So small and cute. The time stretch. And let's go ahead and um, now run the, the function to generate the power distribution on it. And this is what we end up with. So what do we think? This is our four second version, our, our four second spectrogram of the horn. Um, if we roll back up here a little higher, we can see this was what our smoothed out version looked like. Well, that's actually our very, um, our very down sampled version. And then if we go just a little bit higher, we're gonna see the original tiny 0.2 second file, which is this distribute. So I'm looking at this, the essential, it's obviously at a much lower resolution um, image here than this. It looks essentially the same. However, I see lots of little noisy artifacts in there. I'd probably end up downsampling this as well. Actually, I, I guess I did this when I was working on this a moment ago. I'll downsample it again by taking out certain vertical sli or slices along the y-axis or certain frequency hertz. See what that looks like. Come on now, let's go down here and make it a little easier to look at. So once we get down to pretty low resolution data, I don't know, something that we can train with or train on? I don't know, I'll come back to that in another video. In this particular video, I just kind of went off on a little tangent, realizing I needed to dig into the Librosa library a little bit deeper and also make sure that some of my assumptions about spectrograms that I was making were correct. And guess what? They weren't correct. So it was good for me to get back in here and um, so I can make some corrections to the uh, overall uh, approach that I'm taking in my the main part of the video series. Okay, this was just an aside. Thanks.